Hi there everyone, it's Jakko here. I want to make a video that is just one take without any editing and I just want to talk to you guys about something that I think is quite interesting and yes, so um, I'm going to make a spaceship corridor scene for Unreal Engine 4 and I've been kind of planning about this and thinking about it in my mind for a while now but now I just got some time in my hand so um, sometimes when you're a freelance artist and you're uh, working not for a company but you're working as a as a free artist you get time and you don't get maybe uh, employment and you don't get the job to do so you got a bunch of time in your hands so so I was thinking that now that I'm in that situation rather than watch YouTube or just uh, take it easy in my home I'm going to be doing something that is is bringing up my skills and something that helps me to to become a better artist and uh, one of the biggest things that I've really noticed in, in my life and uh, as, a, as an artist and as also in my work is that I tend to, to sort of overlook this uh, important step in design and that's what I call design-based workflow and what this is that basically you um, create sketch uh, if you're good at uh, painting or drawing maybe you could do the sketch by hand and then the other people who are not so good in 2D painting maybe we, we want to use Blender or something to the sort of concept it as a 3D and then then take that step of, and take that time of just making put, basically putting some rough shapes together and that's something that I've done here I just uh, actually I had these uh, assets these uh, pipes which I created like a couple of years ago and then also these boxes but it's basically laid out basic structure like if I'm just gonna go in here and and hide these uh, intricate details in here you can see that it's it's just uh, something that I did and this was just something that I, did. I think I used like 20 minutes for this and I think this total was like 20 minutes just put these walls in here and, and make, just make basic shapes just like that and then I used uh, the mirror modifier to uh, do, do just uh, copy it around and then just created some duplicates and created some unique unique parts in here and just something that um, Basically, uh, I have something to show you guys that you don't have to look at blank space because I think I'm probably gonna do this from scratch because you know I didn't uh, put this to the to the grid. So uh, definitely for a project like that, I want to make uh, modular assets so that uh, these uh, modular assets can be copied and then I'm gonna be able to use those as a basics to create some uh, variation and so on. But yes, uh, so. Um, I kind of a, what I like to do is that I like to make a list so that I pretend that I have a employer, I have a art director and who's going to tell me that uh, your project this is what you need to do basically and you have to follow these guidelines because otherwise uh, our pipeline doesn't work so so um, I just basically limit myself and because for art we need limits actually we need something that puts us into uh, some kind of a creative place and limits are always good for us because they allow us to get to that space and the other thing that I noticed that I really want to uh, practice is to, to sort of put myself into into that kind of a mindset where I'm not afraid of making mistakes because um, mistakes are really important um, mistakes can really push us to the right direction and and we really shouldn't be afraid of just take piece of clay in our hands just throw it around it's just like play like a child basically and that's the way how we can come up with uh, some really cool stuff so yes so um, these limits or these uh, requirements what I have set myself is that the, the thing has to be original concept it has to be uh, uh, not existing in reality it, it, I'm not gonna like copy some uh, some uh, war from aliens movie which i have a big temptation to do because it's so damn cool but but instead i'm just gonna i'm not gonna use too much reference and i'm i'm not gonna i might actually take some reference like uh, watch some pictures from uh, some naval ship corridors or some submarine corridors or spaceship uh, iss uh, tunnels and that's because that's the real stuff we can always uh, look at the reference from the real world but what we should avoid do is that take a reference which is already being conceptualized for example yeah like alien movies or some science fiction movies or games and so something like that because someone has already done that process of of creating something so we should be original and we should be completely um, completely just uh, unique in that so so the original concept is one of the things that I really require of myself for this project that that everything is 
non-existent in reality is, it has to be because it's a spaceship it's not a something that exists so I have to think about design so I have to be a spaceship designer basically and that's really interesting if you think about that so okay original concept and as I said all I said non-existing in reality so um, if there's gonna be like a uh, something like a there should be some kind of console in here or some kind of a device in here and then it has a screws uh, I'm not gonna be putting some Phillips screws to that because you know um, I don't think that's so interesting because you know in the future maybe people have come up with new ideas to make screws they're not gonna be Phillips screws they're gonna be like a, um, I don't know and that's the interesting point so so that's it and then the futuristic technology so I'm just kind of a sort of pushing myself that that I'm not gonna be doing like some retro like uh, alien isolation kind of uh, retro thing which is really cool but I'm more kind of focused into something that is more into the future more into the to the new stuff and and so on but then again what does it mean to be futuristic is that going to be a bright future is it going to be a dark future it's going to be like a Blade Runner future or is it going to be like a Star Trek future so I think I'm going to be more more like into that grit and grime so that that uh, no Star Trek but more more like this kind of a ominous this kind of like a dark and almost like a threatening looking a uh, looking a uh, future thing that that you know human civilization has kind of fucked up and then uh, their <laughs> spaceship is 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 leaking and and there's gonna be atmosphere and so on so that is just things that i personally like but yeah and then uh, the other thing that i want to be doing here is that uh, i want to be as modular as possible so that i'm going to be able to reuse these assets in the future projects so that i'm going to be able to to get something in my hands that i'm going to be able to reuse so so uh so what modularity really means is that you build basically to the grid so that uh, this wall is a certain length and then this floor piece is a certain length so you're going to be able to snap them together in unreal engine and what I've done before is that I've created like sections of tunnels and things like that, but but it's really limiting because then you just you have one section and that's it. But I like to make it more like refined so that we have like one section of the wall, like this wall could be one section, this the floor could be one ceiling and so on. Then then all kind of stuff that I've showed before, like uh, these tube and things, could be their unique uh, modular assets. So that like these these weird box things could be. It could be the one like they are at the moment actually and 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 so on so yes um modular definitely is good and that allows me to also more freely assemble the scene in unreal engine so i don't have to go back and forth because that's something that i really don't want to do is that do do something and then go to unreal engine and then have to change something and re-import and so on so that's not not, not really I'm not too, too too big a fan of that, so I'd like to just basically make as as good assets as possible. And then, of course, it's possible that I could uh, one way to approach this would be that I'm just gonna create a really this kind of a, like a, a block out that I could be creating these dummy assets and which are really simple. And then uh, build the scene in Unreal Engine, test lights and this lighting and and so on in there and then just you know refine the assets put the detail in there and, and do that intricate detail but but again the the, the point here is that uh, we don't want to put detail all over the place that's something that is really uh, important in design is that you have areas with where I can sort of rest and then you have these intricate details where you want uh, people to look at that, that that's something that is important then use that time and effort to do those parts so so that's a huge challenge especially for a guy like me who don't have tons of uh experience of doing like uh this this type of a concept design work uh so um yes uh and also to it's important to be um really cautious about the time what you use because you don't want to be uh doing some like little um screw holes in here which are never going to be seen because they're going to be in the shadow so so yeah um that's something and then yeah so i'm going to be uh rendering in unreal engine 4 and, and it's going to be seen that i would like to make it so that uh, it's possible to walk around and and sort of experience that um uh, that assets so that people can just go there and you know there's going to be some kind of sounds and, and something like that maybe the sound effects are not going to be too difficult to make so so i'm thinking that uh, i mean uh 
of course sound sound design and that is just its own world um completely that you know making uh ambient sounds and that kind of thing is something that i'm just interested about and it's going to be maybe like a fun for me to just drop some um some sort of uh, um, sound effects in there and then that the player when it moves around you they can experience that ambience of the place and then then um, I want to use Texture Atlas because uh, Atlas is because um, I want to be able to be as um, efficient as possible in the texture memory use because there's going to be a lot of stuff in here and and I also want to sort of uh, show my potential future employer that I'm going to be able to be super efficient about this stuff because it's very important and and again that how to organize this is that well I could. I was thinking that I could maybe make like one atlas which could have like the the walls and the, the, the large larger kind of a, uh, shapes in here like for example the walls and then the floor and uh, ceiling could have their own texture atlas and uh, and that's just of course that's something that I want to do in Substance Designer that uh, we have the texture atlas node in there which is really super useful because it allows to to basically set the measurements that I'm going to measure for example uh, the width and height of uh, these, I'm going to be able to use uh, Blender's measurements. Then I'm going to be measure this area and then set uh, texture density for our textures so that um, the texture density doesn't going to break. That that is, you know what it's going to be and you're not wasting any space. So that's really that's super efficient. It's going to be just so great because uh, um, it's going to be able to be, we're going to be able to use that very well and we can use use that in the real game games basically because the games uh, always uh, nowadays I think the bigger requirement is that uh, you need to be really super efficient with the texture space uh, rather than the, like the polygons you can use more polygons nowadays you can use like this med poly modeling where you're just using basically more geometry but but I think that the focus should be that just be as clear as possible to, to be as as um, efficient as possible with the textures so yeah texture atlases is gonna be one thing that I'm going to be using, and then so um, uh, what I actually am planning to do now. This is just something that I just could did like 20 minutes. This stuff, so I'm going to be actually start to build these individual um, blockouts for this. So I'm going to be making a blockout, really, really rudimentary and big. Uh, the main large kind of shapes that are going to be in there, and um, then while I'm done that, I'm going to be sort of get into the medium uh, area where I'm going to be adding a little bit more a uh, little bit like medium scale details and then at last scene when I'm satisfied with those um, I'm going to be able to to really just get in there and model all the details in there but that's going to be last step and probably before I'm going to be uh, doing any of these tubes or things like that uh, I'm going to be making this uh, actually a trick that I learned from Richard Pipes in, in YouTube and he was doing um, I think that was actually this uh, bar scene this this um, uh, a pub uh, this uh, British pub scene and 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 what he did was that he actually used uh, I think he used Maya and he just uh, modeled everything basically in Maya the all the props and assets and things like that and what he did was he put some lights into the scene and rendered out uh, something like that and and then uh, when he rendered out he was able to just do a paint over in Photoshop and he was able to maybe isolate some make create some masks in in I don't know if you could remember exactly what, how he did but but it's possible that we use um, some uh, render out like that and and then we're going to be able to do a paint over and we were going to be able to test different uh, color uh, values in our scene because you know um, we we want to be able to avoid that risk which is that we um, do uh, specific work and we're not going to be able to use that work so so one thing that I'm probably going to be doing is that I'm going to get into this point where I'm going to be able to um, just uh, figure out that what is where and and, and what is what is uh, basically what so that I could be able to maybe put some colors in here and maybe put some uh, rust and things like that in the tubes so I'm gonna get able to sort of think about the palette what kind of a color palette I'm gonna be working with so so what kind of colors are gonna be in there and that's really important because you know colors are they are they are so like they inform us so much about the the world 
what we are looking at that that what, what kind of a ship is this really going to be is it going to be um is it going to be some kind of like a, a military vessel is it going to be a scientific exploration vessel or or is this maybe some kind of a medical bay in that ship and what is this corridor really exactly and so on so that uh, you know i was thinking that that sort of that uh, when we are creating something we should really get to the space where we are starting to use our imagination so so i'm just asking myself that so we're talking about spaceship corridors so in reality in spaceship corridor what could there be i mean that we just put the walls in there and that's not going to be quite enough there has to be something more interesting than the walls and and certainly and, and for absolutely sure that then the walls what are they made of and so on so the things that just come to my mind okay so spaceship corridor well i think spaceship require uh, some kind of a ventilation or some kind of like a oxygen supply because you know spaceships generally move with space and and then then all kinds of like ventilation shafts and uh, oxygen filters or like air filters um, uh, which remove uh, co2 from the air i suppose because people breathe and so on and and then the other thing is that if the ship is uh, moving in zero gravity you you might actually need some kind of handles so i put the handles in here i just copied actually these handles from these because this is asset why i created before and then just put them in here so that the, if the mo ships moves in zero gravity then people are going to be floating and when they are floating they need something to grab into and just basic really cliche kind of stuff uh, but about the cliches um, it's impossible at this point in in time to create something that isn't a cliche so i don't believe i'm going to be able to make completely unique non-cliche um, spaceship corridor so so the thing is that there's going to be cliches and i just have to to accept that and i think cliches are not going to be necessarily a bad thing they can be a good thing if you're good enough you're going to be able to use that to your advantage that that you're going to be able to make a fresh take on something like that so um yeah so the spaceship corridors yes air filters uh handles to grab into some kind of uh maybe there could be a panel in here which is sort of an environmental control panel that you could control like temperature and things like that and and then these tubes what are they? these two tubes could be some kind of like a uh, maybe some kind of uh liquid could be in them like maybe it could be some kind of like a fluid for our heating systems or uh or maybe even like an engine that, that there could be like uh, some electrical wiring going on there um, it, it can be really quite much anything so you because this isn't a, uh, this isn't gonna be uh, you're not gonna be modeling this for spec specifications so it's quite free in that so so uh, anyway it's sci-fi so you can get get away with uh, things like that but yes um, so just a little like um, inspirational stuff about how to how to approach tasks like that that you know going to be creating a something from scratch so so anyway to, to sort of uh, summarize uh, my point here is that i'm going to be doing concept design and something that i'm just going to invent by myself from scratch so this is the first video and i'm going to be making next part when i'm able to create more more better block out of this and when i'm going to be able to start to think about the, the colors and think about shapes and things like where where this corridor is going to be leading and what's going to be here because i want to maybe expand this a little bit so so uh, stay tuned for next i hope you enjoyed this little creative talk and uh, i'll see you soon this was yako uh, bye bye